Hey guys, welcome back. Warbomb here. Um, today, we got another one of our tabletop matchups. Sorry for the late upload. Uh, this was supposed to go up on Friday, actually, but I just haven't had time to record this because uh, the when well, I was going to record it raw, but you know, we did a lot of thinking and a lot less talking. So I decided to do post commentary. Also speeds up the video as well. Before we get into, it, in, into it, you guys on the drill, drop a like, subscribe, share all that good jazz. Uh, remember, if you leave a comment on these videos, you have a chance to win a whole booster box. Thanks to our lovely sponsors at Guardian Gaming, Code Warbomb at checkout. Today, we're doing a really something I'm really excited about. To the right we have Steven, like always. Um, he's playing Eternatus VMAX. This is actually the same list that we uploaded, but we put in another Zigzagoon and we took out a few things. I think we took out a Piers and some other stuff to put in a 2-2 line of Weavile as well because we really like the ability of being able to move energies around. Weavile does not move special energy, it's something to keep in mind, but it does move the basic and uh, it's really good for like taking the energies off of a damage Eternatus and putting it on a fresh one, and you can continue attacking from there. And to the right, or to the left, you guys have me playing Inteleon once again. You guys know I live and breathe Inteleon. It's literally one of my favorite decks to play. Uh, today we're doing it with the Rose Engine and Sylv Valley as our draw after we use Rose. I'm actually really excited about this. This is probably the more fun deck for me to play. Uh, 160 with Spike Muth, our brand new stadium. So what Spike Loop does every time uh, during your turn, if you retreat, uh, the Pokemon that goes into the bench takes two damage. So you don't have to manually retreat anytime you go into the bench. So like if you use a switch or like if it's expanded, you use a Guzma or something like that, whatever makes you go back to the bench will make you take two damage. So the whole thing is that if Eternatus is or like Zigzagoons or anything like that, it's retreat. Uh, they take two damage counters, which puts them in range of the 60 damage snipe or like in Eternatus's case, it puts them in range of the two AKO. Uh, I'm really not sure if I like this over Vitality Band, because Vitality Band also kind of hits those numbers uh, with a 2 KO. but Spike Muth also gives you a counter stadium, which is great for, um, you know, dealing with Black Market and other stadiums and other against other matchups. It's Water, which is good versus Sense of Scorch. I think Inteleon is in a really good place right now. There's not as much electric. The only electric deck is like Vicavolt, which if you're playing Rose, you shouldn't worry too much about Vicavolt, but I'll do that. I'll do that testing later. Um, you know, we, the 320 HP, a little bit awkward, but once again, Intellion is interesting because you have that really good first attack that just puts energies back into the hand, which is a great way to slow down your opponent. You can play Disruption, um, like Crushing Hammers or stuff are good in this deck because you can burn them from your hand before you draw off Sil Valley. Uh, and you don't have to worry too much about like cutting down on your supporter line to make Sil Valley a more active card, because uh, what makes Sil Valley good in this deck is simply just Rose. If you guys don't know what Rose does, it lets you attach two energies from your discard pile to one of your um, to one of your V Max Pokemon. So it's a great way to set up Inteleon's 160 attack. 160 is really good in the format. It's just awkward because of the um, the 340 HP Eternatus has, but that's where Spike Muth or Vitality Camp Band comes into play. I'm not playing Vitality Band like I mentioned earlier. And also it does 160 plus 60 Snipe. 60 Snipe is great. Uh, this is why I like Spike Muth a little bit more because once again, it can get those numbers versus um, Jirachis. Uh, Spike Muth destroys Jirachi engines because they constantly have to take that damage on, unless you play net, which is, you know, it makes you think maybe playing Mr. Mime in this deck might be useful. I'm currently not, but you can very easily put it in. Um, and uh, it's, you know, just in case they retreat and if they don't pick up the damage, you can put that 16 snipe to damage and knock out a Zigzagoon or a Jirachi or anything like that. Also, it does technically, like what, three hit KO a, um, a Crobat. So you can attack other things while putting 60 damage on a Crobat like three times and then you just take a bunch of prizes. This deck is amazing at taking like all three, pri all six prizes for a game in like one turn. It's really good for that. Uh, another card that can easily thin the deck as well as thin your hand is the Capacious Bucket. Um, uh, sometimes I bucket just to like throw the energies away. Sometimes I bucket for nothing. Really just depends on the Savali hands here. I've been talking too much about the game. I've been talking about the decks too much, but you guys can see what's going on in the game. This is doing 40 on this active turn. This 40 into uh, 160 is what, 200? And then another 160 is 360, which is knockout. So the 40 damage on the active is not bad. 40 anywhere else is kind of like meh. Like I could have put 40 on his Zigzagoons, but then he could have like scooped it up, so it kind of feels pointless. I'd rather put 40 on something that I know I'm going to be able to knock out. I'm waiting for the Spike Muth plays. So Spike Muth I thought was a lot better than what it was originally. Like I thought it was any time they move from the active to the bench, including during my turn. But unfortunately it's not that good. But I still think the card is good enough and worth playing for both a counter stadium and also putting things in range and just, you know, destroying these decks that are playing Jirachi. We're going to get knocked out here, so Eternus being Eternus uh, here. We could use Rose if we can find it. Now uh, we have Sil Valley down. Uh, it'd be nice if this thing for 160. Rengu is great in a Rose Engine because you can put those cards you want to keep in your hand, like uh, Bosses Orders and stuff like that, uh, back on top of the deck before you use Rose, which is probably what I'm doing right now. Yeah, I'm using Rose right here, discarding my hand, putting the two there. And 
just gonna draw my five off Silk Valley. So as you can see, even though we use Royals, we still managed to draw a bunch of cards. It's a lot more set up than like a Welder, for instance, but it does make that it does make Inteleon pretty decent, honestly. I'm gonna go ahead and hit 160 on the active and 60 on something. Um, let's see. I don't remember. It's been a long time since I played this. I think I'm just gonna put it on a Zigzagoon, uh, just because I'm. A, I could have also put it on an Eternus because 60. Yeah. Oh, I'm gonna put it on a Crobat. Okay, cool. So I'm going the Crobat route. Um, mainly because if I hit this thing, and not, yeah, there's the there's the uh, scooping that I was worried about. So I'm glad I did that route. Um, I could easily knock out Eternatus and then knock out Crobat and Zigzagoon at the same time. I do ended up I did end up loving four Crobat four uh, Zigzagoons in this deck though, just because it's so it's so nice to be able because like like in theory you can knock out anything from full with enough with enough Zub not Zubats with enough. Zigzagoons, I kept saying Crobat. Uh, we have four Zigzagoons in the deck now, and I like it a lot because in theory you can knock out pretty much anything from full with enough uh, Zigzagoons and scoop up nets. So Sneasel is great once again, like I mentioned earlier. Like if he got Sneasel earlier, he could have easily retreated into a different one. He's just gonna retreat hard here, take the spike move damage, which is pivotal, uh, 240, because now with that 240, he's exactly two snipes away from being knocked out as opposed to three, which is like Spike Muth doing its job. He's, because he's exactly at 240, he's in range now. Um, so Spike Muth damage, at first I was like, eh, you know, I could achieve the same thing with Vitality Band, uh, but because of like, so you have to, you force switches a lot, like things like Eternatus can't really play Malo and Lana because they have to be consistent. Um, unless like this deck starts picking up a lot of steam, of course. Um, not to mention, like, you can't really play a lot of supporters in uh, Eternus either because you want to maximize your Crobats, so having too many supporters could be a problem. But here, I'm able to just... I'm going to hard retreat, I guess? Oh, I'm trying to get myself out of range. I see, yeah. I agree with this play because I have another Rose. Yeah, there we go. Boom. Because, like, he can knock me out next turn. I'd rather I'd rather him not knock me out. Draw some Valley, of course. Um, yeah, we got some Hammers, so we can start using those. Attach manually and Crushing Hammer. Tails again. Oh, I remember this game. I'm pretty sure I got tails on all four of my hammers this game. We have double Soul Valley action, so we do draw, we do churn through our deck in this matchup. Uh, it makes me kind of want to consider playing other techs, but besides Mr. Mime, which, like, where's the best place for Mr. Mime, right? Uh, I can't really think of too many. Like, look, we only have, like, so many cards in our deck left, but we're in an amazing position here because we can hit this thing for 160 and then put 60 on the other Eternatus, and then next turn we can, if he, if he evolves into a VMAX or something, um, if he evolves this active one to a VMAX, right, and he switches or whatever, um, then we can take, I don't know, it's kind of difficult actually now that I'm thinking about it, um, because we're still going to need, like, one prize afterwards, we'll see, but he's still behind, right, he needs a boss's orders here twice to win the game, because just attacking this is not enough, he won't be able to take a knockout, which should put us at a really big advantage, so we'll see, he needs a land, did he land a VMAX, let's see, doesn't look like he did. Oh, but he has a boss. So he might knock out the Italian. Yeah. Okay, take three prizes here. Attack with this one. So now my goal and my game plan is to, is to boss with something else. And uh, to take the five prizes this turn. And then put that one damage counter to put me in range. And now he needs only... He just needs a boss for game now. Uh, unfortunately, I'm going to need a boss this turn. And then a boss for game next turn. Luckily, I have a boss now. Uh, Rangru being super useful by preserving our bosses while we use Rose. That's been something really helpful in this matchup. Because I notice that every time I use Rose, I have a boss in hand. Uh, <laughs> so that's been pretty nice. I need to start attaching energies to something in case I need to attack next turn. Which I most likely am going to. That black market being gone is pretty big. So this is why I like Spike Muth. And we're going to draw off Soul Valley here. Just trying to make sure that we have boss. And keep it on top of the deck. And we're going to go and take five prizes here. So now he has no attackers ready. He can obviously evolve this Eternatus and boss's orders for game. So let's see if he has it. Uh, he has Marnie, so no boss, which means we are good to go. Um, all we need now is a boss ourselves. There's so much in this deck I want to play. Like, how nice would it be to have a Zigzagoon right now? But once again, bench space is like the biggest thing with this deck, right? So you can't really afford to do it. And I am looking for a boss now. Um, he didn't attack because, oh yeah, he didn't find his VMAX. The boss is in the deck. I think there's only six cards left. Um, I'm going to grab this. Yeah, I'm pretty sure there's only six cards left in my deck. So uh, we're going to Dedene, draw the last six. And there's boss for game. So we are... 
winning game one. So obviously things could have went poorly if he did find boss, but he needed to find a lot there. And once again, um, especially that late in the game after your opponent has used pretty much all their crobats, or like, yeah, after that, after your opponent has used all their crobats, it's like really difficult for uh, for um, Eternus to find the stuff they need. So that ended up working out in our favor quite nicely. So now we're gonna go into game two here. Um, double Inteleon. Uh, I'm going first, oh yeah, so this is, um, I think it's a different day, so we reflipped or something like that. So usually, oh wait, what's going on here? Oh yeah, I just attached an energy and pass. That's right. And he's going in. Okay, usually he'd be going first because of turn this, but I think we rerolled. So ignore, ignore this. It's all good. Uh, okay, Crobat. I think he goes first in the next game anyway, so it should be all right. Um, let's see. He has a big old bench. He has Sneasel down, double Zigzagoons, Eternus, and a Crobat. And I have a boss's orders, and apparently I am stuck. So now we get to showcase the, the somewhat clunkiness that this deck can achieve. Of course, it's, it shouldn't be that clunky because like we are playing, I think like something like 20 Pokemon. Like we're playing a lot of Pokemon and we're playing a lot and like the four Pokecoms, four Pokeballs, right? So this is just unfortunate. We're also still playing like the full supporter route. So we're playing the consistency cards. We just clumped up, right? It is what it is. It's just what happened. That's Pokemon for you. But uh, I'm trying to remember. We have a 4-4 four, four line. I'm pretty sure, if I don't, if I remember correctly, 4-4 four, four line of Inteleon, a 3-2 line of, um, of Oranguru, not Oranguru, um, Silvalli, one Oranguru. So what is that? Four, eight plus seven, 15, one Oranguru, 16. To the Dene's, no Crobats, I think, in this deck. So that's enough Pokemon. It's nearly 20 Pokemon. Um, it's like 18 or something like that. Let me double check the math, actually. Orangu, yeah, it's 15 plus 3, which is, yeah, 18 Pokemon. Yeah, sick. So we have a lot of Pokemon, so it's just a matter of just, you know, not drawing well. But we did get a bunch of Inteleons down, so we'll see how this, where this takes us. I would like a switch here so I can actually put this energy back in his hand, but he can just with a switch plus a uh, manual attachment, he can attack with the bench Eternus, and the, so like it's kind of risky. So I think I should just get, depending on my hand, right, I should probably just get Type Null. Unless I, if I have a draw sport in hand, of course. If I don't have a draw sport in hand, then maybe I should get the Dene. Just to set me up. Yeah, okay, cool. All right, oh, also, okay, no, here's what I'm trying to do this game. This game I'm trying to get um, my Crushing Hammer. If I can get Crushing Hammers to land uh, and also set, find a Type Null, and switch as well, that'll put me in a really good position. So there's a water energy. Uh, we're just gonna put 40 on the bench. Okay, that should be fine too. Um, it does put him in range with the two AKO plus, um, yeah, two of the two AKO. So I guess that's not too bad. Weave out here doing the work. So now he can switch this thing. Or oh, this is the Avamax already. So he already evolved the active one, which means we are gonna lose a big old Inteleon here, which is unfort, and we don't have the type null down yet. Um, so that's. You know, unfortunate. <laughs> so things are not going super well for us this game. I'm about to start playing like Great Ball in all these decks, dude. Great balls, great balls are working in a uh, in uh, Eternus. Now, granted, they are playing a bajillion Pokemon. Actually, how many Pokemon does Eternus play? A four-four line with like let's just say like best case scenario, they play four-four of Eternus, four Zigzagoons, four Hoopas, right? Uh, that is, and four Crobats, right? Four, eight, twelve, sixteen, four, eight, twelve, sixteen, twenty Pokemon. And then, um, in my case, we cut some of them to play a 4-2-2 two, two line of, uh, of uh, Weavile. So I guess probably my deck plays like 22 Pokemon or something like that. Uh, so, Great Balls work, but they work for a reason. All right, we got a Orangru down and a Silval and a Type Null. So let's see if we can do some shenanigans here. Did we get the Rose? We did get the Rose. Uh, oh, wait a minute. My bad. I was trying to flip for a Crushing Hammer, but I played the Rose down instead. Uh, did I play Draw Supporter? I don't remember. I can Rose this turn, but I will get knocked out, most likely. Uh, yeah, we're just gonna hit this thing for 60, put the energy back. Um, with the Weavile, putting the energy back literally means nothing, because you can just attach the energy, move the energy from the Weavile to the active and attack me. Uh, but he's not in, I'm not in knockout range yet. He still needs, what, um, 270 damage plus, the 50 damage, so I'm actually one damage counter away from being a knockout range, which is not good, but he just needs to find a net, right? If he finds the net, he gets a knockout. Um, but he's gone through a few at this point in the game. That's why I was pretty comfortable attacking with this uh, Inteleon on this turn, I remember correctly. It's been a while since we played this game, but I do somewhat remember. Um, he's gonna go ahead and switch, play, put the two damage counters on himself from the switch, and attack me with Hoopa. So this is actually a good play, because now he's now he doesn't have to worry about me hitting him for like um, 
160 this turn, but he does put damage on himself, so it is kind of risky. Uh, I can hard switch. Well, I, no, I can't really. I have to find like a switch myself. I can't just hard switch. Because mm. I won't be able to attack this turn. I really want to not. I don't know. I don't know. This is a weird turn, right? Because I don't want to attack this Hoopa. That thing has 140 damage on it. So I could snipe it once and it would be in range of another 160 attack. But I'm only taking like four prizes that way next turn. Or only three prizes, four with this Hoopa, right? But uh, I guess I kind of have to hit this Hoopa. We're gonna go ahead and draw off the Sil Valley. We only got one energy off the Rose, which is unfortunate, but it's fine. We're only, I guess we're only hitting this thing for 60 and hoping it can't retreat. Of course, once again, he can find nets. So it's not like the best scenario for us, but we're not in exactly the best scenario anyways. Um, especially since we don't have another Inteleon down to like fall back on. But I guess like if he takes a knockout on this one, we can attack with a new one, bench a regular Inteleon, and then evolve it to VMAX. So we're gonna hit it for 60. He's gonna put the energy back in his hand, see what he can do. Yeah, he can attach the height energy there. Um, quick ball for what nothing, I guess, just to put something in his hand. Probably to thin it, right? He probably has a research in his hand or something. Let's see, let's see. Yeah, I think I'd like, even though this is like, I like doing the commentary, yeah, there's the research. I like doing the post commentary because it's easy for me to explain what's happening and also I get to talk to you guys. But by the way, don't forget, oh, I have to talk to you guys actually. There's a lot to talk about. So we'll see, it's just a matter of like, will I, will he win or will I win? It really just, it, it's a race against the clock now based on what we draw. But so here's the thing, right? I have, a tabletop simulator and I have put pretty much a bunch of decks of Darkness Ablaze. Now my buddies who said they were going to play with me, which is the whole reason why I put in all the work, because like building a deck takes a while on tabletop sim, especially like since I had to not only build decks, but I had to make the whole setup. So it, it's a lot of work. <laughs> so um, my buddies who said they would play games with me, so, that, so I would have a reason to do all the work, right? Uh, are not doing it right now. They've been busy with their own thing. So that has made things really awkward for me. And now I'm coming out to you guys to ask if any of you guys have tabletop sim who wants to join the Discord and wouldn't mind playing some games with me on stream, especially if you have a good mic. Um, we can hang out and call and talk about the games, play some games. Uh, I do like, I, I would much rather stream a bunch of games for testing than like meet up in person with people like this. And like Steven, we can only meet up on like Mondays. Um, so we can only meet up once a week. And also it's like, we can only record for like so long before we both have to go to work, right? Um, so there's a height energy so we can retreat, but I can't snipe it. 16 and 20 has 300 damage. So like I can just snipe him for knockout. Um, but if he hits me, I'm in a really bad position because he can just hit either Inteleon for game. And he goes for the Savali, which is actually a good play because it does put me in a really awkward position. But now he's not too at KOing the Savali, but I guess he can just boss his orders for next the next turn for game. So, ugh, that's pretty bad. <laughs> Especially since we don't take a knockout here. Um, the best, I mean, the best I can do probably is boss his orders a Crobat, um, knock out the Internatus and leave the Crobat damage and then attack the next turn for game if he doesn't win the game next turn. So like, this this turn is completely based off the fact if he wins the game next turn or not. But anyways, tabletop sim, twitch.tv slash aborbom, I think. Um, if you guys wanna do it, feel free to. Also, once again, we are sponsored by Guardian Gaming. I know they're selling these Crobats, uh, not Crobats, these Dedenes from the from tabletop simulator. Um, oh yeah, I forgot about the, uh, the, the stadium. The stadium made me take one less prize which means I need to find the counter stadium and knock out this active Eternus to win the game, which is still like fine. The game doesn't really change too much. It just comes back, it comes down to, can he find boss's orders for game? Uh, it looks like he didn't, but now I have to find boss's orders for game or I lose. Not only do I have to find boss's orders, I also have to find the counter stadium. Um, I don't know why I just shuffled my whole deck. Uh, yeah, I shouldn't have done that. Oh no, because he just reset stamped me. I was looking at my hand instead of the board. Yeah, okay, he just stamped me, that's right. Um, <laughs> um, so yeah, there's that. Of course, Garden Gaming, uh, they are selling these uh, the Denes for really, really cheap if you guys want to check it out. And then of course you can get 10% off at using code Orbum. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I need to talk to you guys about while we're here. Um, hey, oh, like the video only because like 
I'm trying to upload again, guys. Like I really am. So um, because you know I haven't uploaded for a long time, the algorithm is not in favor for me right now. So it is a tough turn. I remember thinking like the only thing I can do here is uh, because I can't attack this crowbat. I can't knock out this hoopa because I'll lose the game next turn, right? So I need to not knock out this hoopa and hope he doesn't have a the hope he doesn't have a way to knock me out next turn because uh i need to hope he can get stuck in the active right it's pretty late in the game he's used most of his switches and uh, his stuff i don't have boss's orders for game um i don't have a silk valley to draw even more cards the most i can do is a rangru so he top decks a switch for game so we lost that game unfortunately my whole game plan was literally just hope he did not have whatever he hope he had no way to get out of the active which was unfortunate but it is what it is um not all games are perfect. We didn't get so bad. It's pretty late in that game. So uh, it might be worth playing. Well, that was weird. Uh, it might be worth playing more type nulls. Um, we'll see. But I really like the way the deck runs right now. I just want to play more games with it through testing. So hopefully I can find more uh, tabletop simulator partners. So join the Discord. That's where you'll find it. If you ever want to play games with me and stuff like that, that's the best place to do it. This will be the last game. I think this is a long game too, but this is a pretty fun game. Uh, <laughs> He's deciding which one goes active. Hmm. Can't decide. <laughs> this is illegal, guys. Don't do this. He is. Uh, he's doing illegal plays, but uh, I don't think it matters. <laughs> Three Eternatus. Uh, surprised he benched all of them, but you know, might as well, right? Yeah, because all you because he he's playing against Italian. He doesn't have to worry too much about playing the Hoopa down. So he just wants to make sure he has space for his Zigzagoons and Crobats. Um, probably Sneasel as well, as you can see. He's going first this game, so we just kind of like flip-flopped who went first. So it doesn't really matter at the end of the day. Um, Inteleon, my lead. He has an manual attachment attached. So whenever we go second against Eternatus, it's so scary. Because like we essentially have to say, if we don't land a Crushing Hammer, we just have to say, all right, dude, uh, here is your food. Feel free to take these free prizes because we uh, you're going to knock me out. <laughs> So more buckets, probably I have research in hand or something. Uh, maybe, I don't know, maybe I'm gonna play the Dene. Uh, I don't, did I forget to put the Inteleon back in my deck? I think I did. Yikes, okay, hopefully I didn't, but I might have, and I apologize if I did, because uh, that's not good. <laughs> but you know, these mistakes happen when you play when you play live. I do, please forgive us. This is definitely like long day of testing material, so. Mistakes happen. It's all right. Don't, don't, don't destroy me. <laughs> all right, let's see. It is pretty bad for me though, because like that's gonna make drawing a, an Intellion later really difficult. Um, gonna Marnie here. But we, I mean, we have an ideal board. Uh, two Intellions down from the looks of it. Uh, once I bench it, and then a Type Null. It'd be nice to have two Type Nulls, but you know it is what it is. And we have a Rangru. So right. we hit this actor for forty. It's kind of bad because once again, he is just going to knock me out because it's an Eternatus and they just do that. Uh, so we're going to lose, but that 40 damage does actually make a difference. It does put him into a KO range now. So at least it's something. Um, all we need to do now is find a VMAX, a Rose, Sil Valley, you know, just everything. Luckily, the Denes exist. I'm not playing Crobat in this deck because once again, I don't see myself benching Crobat. I almost always am probably going to want to use... Uh, the Dene, because there's so many like one card like setups in this deck, right? Because of like all you like, because of Rose will empty your hand anyways, so Crobat almost becomes worthless. And you don't ever want to hold on to combo pieces because there's not really combo pieces in this deck. You either have the Silvalli and bench it, or you have the uh, Rose play it and draw off the Silvalli, right? So um, Crobat makes no sense in this deck. I'd rather just play the Dene. Crobat only makes sense in case I want to push a little bit further. Luckily, we finally landed a Crushing Hammer, so that's pretty nice. I'm pretty sure we landed like one or two last game, but like we've been definitely super negative on the Crushing Hammers today. Which is, you know, I don't like formats where I'm forced to play Crushing Hammer. All right, hopefully, I remember to put the Silvalli back in this time. Um, luckily, Steven is there to help me out. <laughs> so Intel down. Uh, do we have a Rose? So if we have a rose, we're in good shape. Uh, we do not, maybe, I don't know. Oh, uh, we have a spike move, and I guess we're just gonna hit this dude for 60. Luckily we landed that crushing hammer, so whiffing that rose is not the end of the world. Uh, surprised I didn't play the Denny to find a rose though, but I guess it's not the end of the world. He takes damage, so he's at 120. Now he only has 140 HP left. So now he's in range of a Guzma knockout. So that's pretty cool. 
They're not Guzma. Boss's order is knockout. Or we can continue to hit him for snipe damage. Um, if he switches one more time, then he is in range of double snipe. So it's a lot of good things right now. I love the, the constant damage numbers. It does make this matchup a lot easier, but we also would like to go first more often. <laughs> We're gonna get hit for 30 and he's gonna accelerate energy. So uh, it's pretty good. It's it's pretty good attack because all of our energy disruption kind of feels like meaningless, but you know, it's fine. Uh, at the very least, and, and also like he, we're pretty much in range of knockout. All he needs to do is bench one Zigzagoon or find a net, and he has three left in the deck, so <laughs> things are not looking great for us. We're gonna go ahead and Denny here. Let's see if we can find Rose. That would be ideal because I want to hit these things hard. Uh, putting energies back right now doesn't really matter too much. I mean, it kind of matters because technically he could whiff a switch, but uh, I'd rather just you know, hit him for 160 this turn, put him in range. Especially since he's most likely going to retreat into something else, like the other bench turn is. Because if he finds a height energy, he touches the height energy, manually retreats, move the energy from, cause with Weavile, and then he starts attacking again. And if he finds a Zigzagoon, that is a knockout. Um, just finding another Italian that tells me that my type null is prized, which is not great. Um, I also might just discard this hand. That also might be another reason why I'm doing this. But I, you figured I'd want to bench another type null. But there's a Marnie, so no Rose this turn. Once again, luckily, but another reason why I like the Rose engine in Italian is that you're not kind of relying on it because you have a really good attack in that first attack. Like, it's not like the best attack in the world, but 60 damage puts thing in range. Um, and it disrupts energy. We are landing crushing hammers again, thank God. Um, so now we are pretty, we're in a pretty good position again. Um, so man, oh yeah, in this build I'm playing Fion. Uh, I'm not playing Fion anymore, so whenever I do the deck profile, uh, you'll see that there's no Fion in there. Um, I was playing Fion because once again, I thought if I used Fion with Spike Muth on board, it would put two damage counters on whatever BKM, whatever is, whatever goes to the bench. So. We learned that that wasn't the case, and I just forgot to take it out. But I'm pretty sure that Fion just became another type null, so pretend like it's another type null. Which would have been really nice, because I, I think my type nulls are prized, otherwise I'm pretty sure I would have grabbed them. <laughs> uh, so that's unfortunate, but it's fine, you know, these things happen. So that's not a Zigzagoon, it's a Crobat, which is good news for us, which means he's forced to find a, uh, a scoop up net now. I don't know what he played there, but I'm sure it doesn't matter. Yeah, this Crobat, um, and let's see, looks like he just passed, so that put us in a really good position. Uh, if we can disrupt this energy again, that could be good, but once again, probably looking to play the Rose. Uh, but Crushing Hammer, okay, we got Tails. We didn't get two in a row, and my Crushing Hammer is on top of my deck, so uh, <laughs> that's a thing, but it's alright. Uh, I remember going, wait, which one's my deck? <laughs> yeah, because, oh, I see, because my discard pile always in the bottom, so I got confused. All right, so I attach an energy for turn. Um, still no Rose in hand. Uh, no boss's order either. We have Soul Valley. I could try to top deck the Rose or use a Ranguru and try that way as well. Um, not really sure why. I'm, I'm playing four Rose and I haven't. Even, I don't think I've seen one yet. And we've been pretty. We've been playing this game for a while now. Uh, there's Pokecom that can get us like another Dedenne if I need to. Another Italian works too. Um, oh, okay, good. Put the Pokemon back. That's good. All right, let's see. Now I can draw a few cards with Sil Valley right now. I already attached an energy return. Um, I can draw three off Sil Valley. I already used a Ranguru. Um, I guess like I probably just should, right? Oh, I do have the Rose in hand. Okay. I guess I did the whole time. I don't know what I was doing then. I guess I was just trying to thin all the cards in my hand. Um, and then we'll still value for five. And oh, this is great. This is actually really, really good <laughs> because this game is getting dangerously close to being able to just take all six prizes in one turn. Look at that. 60, 120, 180. He's taking two more damage counters because he had to switch. So he's at 60, 120, 240. Um, he'll be able to hit me and potentially take a knockout if he has a net. Let's see. He's going to boss his order, so he's going to knock out the Sil Valley. Uh, which is good, because he doesn't want to hit this thing unless he has a net as well. And I'm going to put the other um, Inteleon active this time. Um, so, let's see what we can do. We definitely want to find boss's orders ourselves, right? 
Um, so if we can, that'd be ideal. But I don't think we need to this turn. Uh, because he's not in range of like full knockout yet. So this turn we can just attack anything and put 60 damage counters on the uh, on the one with 240 on it. So that's the game plan, right? We just want to put we just want to put 60 damage counters, six damage counters on the one that's more heavily damaged, and then we can just boss his orders, uh, the damage the other damage in turn is, and then take all six prizes for game. That's gonna be the game plan here. Even like two damage counters is enough, right? Because right now has yeah, two damage counters would be enough too. So technically, if he like switches into it or like switches around it. We should be good. Right now, yeah, I'm just thinning the deck as much as I can, so I'm more likely to find bosses orders later. Looks like we found a few, so <laughs> that's good. Now, if he Marnies me, I just have to draw off, like, um, I didn't find another type null, though, which sucks. So, yeah, we're gonna put, uh, hit the damage for 160, and now all we need to do is, if he switches this one, it's just bosses orders. Uh, or, like, hmm, if he switches this one into the damage one, um, the heavily damaged one, it's just bosses orders. If he switches this into the other one, we just win the game. So he, what he needs to do here is not switch because he, this one's not in range and I have to whiff my boss's orders, right? That's the only way he can win because he just needs to attack me twice and he wins the game. But all I need to do is find bosses for game. So this is pretty good. Um, I'm not playing Great Catcher in this deck because okay, he's gonna switch, hard switch into this, which damages him. Um, so he for, oh, he, then there's boss for game. So we have boss for game. Uh, we just attack either one of them. <laughs> He's just double checking math. 60, 120, 180, 180 plus 160 is 340. And then we put six damage counters on the damage to turn this. He's just like, hold on, let me double check. <laughs> but we did win this game. My computer is about to die. So we took all six prizes in one turn. Inteleon, that's really good because that means that things like reset stamp are a lot less scary for Inteleon versus Eternus when you can work out the math that way. Spike Muth doing its best right now, putting things in range every time he retreats. So overall, pretty, pretty good. I'm pretty big fan. I want to, I want to test it. Uh, I want to test it versus other decks. Um, so I'm imagining Sense of Scorch is easy unless they play like all those things that increase their HP. Uh, you do Oko them. But of course, if they do post, play those things to increase their HP, you just put a little bit of chip damage on them and then you take the knockout. Um, Zacian decks sound kind of annoying and the Sidroid decks sound annoying because we don't have any other attackers. So it might be worth looking into some different attackers. One thing I was trying out is Cryogonal, the one that item locks because you can item lock the Sidroid um, so that they have a really hard time finding all their pieces and using their rare candies. So that's a good that's a good way to slow them down, but I haven't really tried it yet. So you'll be seeing a lot of those testing on stream. I might just have an Italian night because I do really love playing Italian. We'll see. But yeah, if you I All talked right, about a yeah. bunch of stuff this video, so I hope you guys watch the whole video. Uh, if you guys want an opportunity to play with me on Tabletop Simulator, feel free to message me on Discord. That's the best way to do it, or on Twitter, but. Discord's the best way because that's where I'll be talking to you by, on live and on all that stuff. Um, once again, Guardian Gaming, as always, drop a like. It's greatly appreciated. Answer the comment question today for a chance to win a uh, booster box whenever they come out, right? Thanks for all the sponsors. Today's comment question today is going to be, what's your favorite deck so far, right? Like, do, are you a big fan of Eternatus or do you would you rather play something else, right? There's going to be two kinds of people, right? There's going to be the people who go, yes, I really want to play the best deck in format, which is either Eternatus or Santa Scorch, or there's the other people who are just like, I want to beat something that can beat the potential best deck in this format. So I have a lot of viewers who really want to play like fighting decks, like um, Phalanx or Sandaconda. I really like Sandaconda. I haven't tried Phalanx yet, so I'm probably going to build a Phalanx deck sometime soon. Um, there's a lot of cool things, a lot of cool options out there. So let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. And once again, got to close out this video. I'm rambling again. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.